Thomas, thank you so much for joining us. First of all, a big congratulations to you. And um, second of all, obstacle course racing. I think most of us, when we hear that, we think of team building at work when our boss thinks we haven't sweated enough. So for our viewers at home, what sport is this? What category does it fit into? Yeah, thanks, Nicole. Um, it's awesome being here. Thanks for having me on. Um, OCR, yes, in short, it's called obstacle course racing. And think of like an army boot camp course, but a, bit, a little bit more fun orientated. Obviously, there's, there's us that take it as an elite sport or as a, as a competitive sport. Um, so it's running obstacles varies from anything like jumping through a, a pool of water to, to climbing over things or under things. And it's really a exciting sport, if you have to ask me. And why OCR, Thomas? I think a lot of people, when they choose to play a sport, you know, they choose something conventional, something that we're all familiar with, football, tennis, cricket, hockey, um, stuff like that. How did you end up choosing um, OCR? Well, I kind of stumbled upon it with, with friends, and I think that's the, the way a lot of people find OCR. And I feel it resonates with, with the world currently because it's just something, it's something different. And it's for 90% of the people that do obstacle course racing, it's for the fun. So I feel it just it resonates with a lot of people having something new, something exciting and something that they can really go out and just forget about the madness in the world and go and enjoy it. And that's kind of how, how I found it at first. And from there, I thought it'd be really, it would be really cool to kind of attempt this crazy thing as a, as a sport. Um, but long story short, from 2014 when I found OCR to now, it's, it's been a, a big learning curve. And um, yo, it's been fun. <laughs> <laughs> as you said, something new. Talk to us about this new record that you have set. Tell us a bit about that. So... The record itself, the Guinness World Records title, is for the fastest 50-meter rope climb. Um, I did this climb as part of a 90-meter rope climb, which was my, my actual initial project or, or goal, was to, to summit the, the Soweto Towers or Orlando Towers in, in Soweto. Um, it just came about, the world was in lockdown, we were all in a very negative mind space. We mm. just, I felt very stagnant and I needed to reach for something. I think a lot of people can resonate with, with the fact that there was nothing going on. From music and entertainment to sporting, every, the world was on pause. And this was something that I set for myself as a personal goal. And yeah, the actual Guinness World Records, fastest 50 meter rope climb. Um, yes, it feels a bit unreal to know that after all this build up, we've actually nailed it. Um, it's, three, four days down, down the line now and still, still trying to, to take it in and just almost realize that it's actually real. I see. I see that you're very calm in trying to take it in, but I know inside you're jumping up around. and down. Yeah. And it's great that you do have something to celebrate um, during this uh, terrible year that many people have had. And, you know, talking about COVID-19 with obstacle course racing, I mean, you need to be outdoors when you're training. Mm -hmm. You need the space. You need the obstacles. And especially when we had levels five and four of lockdown, that would have been an impossible task for you. So how did you manage to adjust? What new creative ways did you find to still train and still be active to do this? Yes, that was an enormous challenge, just not just physically, but mentally as well. Um, OCR is a very diverse sport, and there's a lot of different, let's call it body movements and things that you can do that's still applicable as, as training on the sport. Um, but from, from my side and from my coach's side, we really had to get creative to find adequate training in like the confined space at home. Yeah. And I, f I feel like we got around that in a way. There was a lot of online stuff going around and fun challenges. And with the OCR as well, the international community had a lot of on online events that you could tap into. But I feel the bigger challenge was just mentally trying to stay motivated and not being out able to get out there and feel that excitement with everyone else. It's, that has been the harder part of, of training for this is mentally just knowing Eventually, this, this has to open up a bit and you'll get to your goal. And that specifically has been hard. And I feel like the, the community in general from the start of this project this has been so supportive. And, and that's, that's really pulled me through in, in a lot of ways. And how did you deal with it mentally? Because just when I think of myself, you know, just the ordinary individual at home who doesn't play sport, um, levels five and four of lockdown, I tell you, I got to a point where I was losing my mind. 
um, because you even you couldn't leave your home just to simply go to the restaurant and have a drink, to simply just go to the spa and just get a massage, relax with your friends. Um, so we all got to a point where we felt like, no, 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 no. This is beyond just uh, COVID-19. We're actually literally losing our minds. You know, in cricket, I've seen um, the players do have a psychologist that help them out. Um, when it comes to OCR, how did you deal with having to also uh, have that mental challenge? What, what did you do? Sure. Um, again, I think this whole thing has been so applicable on everyone. We kind of tried to make a little, like a WhatsApp group. I'm pretty sure everyone did that. Like the cricket teams must have been there to support each other as well. And, um, everyone was feeling the same, the same feeling of, of restrictment and just not feeling that, that excitement in life. So we, between the, the training group that I'm on, the, the coach that I'm, that I'm with, we created this small group that we all tried to set challenges through the week that we would try to do simultaneously or within the same day to kind of just measure up against each other and still keep that little bit of competitiveness going. Like, as an athlete, we're always competitive. If we say <laughs> it's not a competition, it usually is. No. Um, so we try to just support each other by doing this, the ideas and the workouts and the training together and still keep that little bit of a, of a competitive factor going. Because in the end, that's, that's kind of the motivation factor for me personally, is to have that competition. Um, so I guess, in short, just support from, from each other pull this through. That's great to hear, Thomas. And before we go, we are running out of time. But way too from here, you have now exceeded the goal that you have set for yourself, which is great. I think we all feel amazing when we actually reach our goals. Um, and I know that you're definitely still celebrating, but way too from here. Yes, definitely still celebrating from here. We are maybe looking at uh, doing another rope climb project, which might be double the height of this one, but not, not, nothing confirmed yet. Currently, I'm just trying to celebrate with the crew that's, that's helped me to get here and the people that supported me and just everyone that's been part of this journey. Just take a moment before we rush to the next one. Just take it in, celebrate it, and just, yeah, just let it soak in. And please do invite us um, when uh, you have your uh, next rope climbing. I think my body will ache, but my <laughs> colleague Gareth, he, he, he might enjoy this. So please do invite us. And thank you so much for joining us. And once again, big congratulations to you, Thomas. That was world champion obstacle course racing athlete Thomas van Tondert joining us to talk about the new Guinness World Record for the 50-meter rope climb that he has set.